my name is Michael Kaczmarski and I'm Markets Editor with FDI Magazine. Um, we are here at Washington DC at uh, IMF Annual Summit and I'm joined by Zoran Stavarski, Minister of Finance and also Deputy Prime Minister of uh, Macedonia. Uh, hello Minister. Uh, hello. And let's start with the first question. We are nearing the end of the day. I know you've had 13 meetings today, <laughs> so a very busy day. Um, once uh, an investor lands to, in, in Macedonia, uh, in Skopje, one of the first signs uh, he sees at the airport is a sign saying, welcome to the new business haven, uh, to the new business cluster of Europe. Uh, why this is the new business haven? Why the investor should be? Uh, interested in, in Macedonia? Well, we live in a competitive environment uh, and we want to emphasize that Macedonia is a very, very dynamic emerging economy located in Europe. Uh, so it's a, it's a place where one can uh, do business uh, uh, without uh, uh, administrative barriers, where costs are much lower than uh, in other countries and where the government is business friendly and can um, assist the investor in every possible field because there is no investment with, without uh, some issues, some challenges, but we are ready to help the investors to overcome those. And that makes a distinction between Macedonia and others. Of course, there are, we are a country with the uh, most attractive tax package and very skilled and uh, competitive labor force. There are many more issues, but I think it's important also to uh, be business friendly and to understand the needs of the businessmen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, the country is not in the European Union. Not being in the European Union is uh, more of a problem or actually an opportunity because it, the country can be more flexible in what it offers to investors. Well, Macedonia is the, at the sweet spot where it's not a member of the Union but it is candidate for European membership. Being a candidate implies that we have to achieve all the standards in terms of harmonization of the legislation, whether it's judiciary system or uh, labor market or some other areas. So it provides the necessary predictability of the laws and the regulations which are important for investors. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we are not member so we can be still more flexible when it comes to taxes and uh, incentives. That's why, uh, and the country which is a candidate country has potential for growth which is much bigger than a, candid a country which is part of the, mm -hmm. of, the, of the European Union already. So that's why we, I, I believe there is a lot of potential for growth. At least twice, we can achieve at least twice higher growth than the average for the European mm -hmm. Union. And we can provide some additional incentives to investors mm -hmm. while on the quality it is not at the re at, at, at the cost of the quality of, of uh, legislation or not not the quality of laws and regulation has to be to meet all European standards but aren't you afraid that some of the investments are uh, given that they're based on, on, on pretty uh, generous incentives are not exactly sustainable um, the moment the tax holidays and investors will pack their bags and, and move to either cheaper location or someone else? Uh, we are speaking a period about a period of several years before we become a member and then there is a transitional period once you are a member. And uh, investors uh, who come and uh, locate their business in one country, uh, if, they are, if the terms are similar to other countries, they are not going to move. Mm -hmm. What Macedonia is offering now, Macedonia can offer certainly in the next 10 to 12 years. And uh, in addition, we are a country where existing investors are starting uh, with, to open second or third factory mm -hmm. because they are satisfied with the quality of, of services they are getting from us and the overall business environment. So I'm not concerned whether these are sustainable because I think once you have an investor who is present there 10 or more years and he uh, realized that he has a uh, workforce with good work ethic, a government that is business friendly, mm -hmm. with low corruption, with less administration than in other countries, he will stay there. At the same time, uh, in Macedonia, as pretty much anywhere else in the world, um, most of the investments go to uh, the area around the capital. But it's Macedonia is not just the capital, right? There are other places where investors could be potentially interested, such as Orchid, where are you from? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, or Prilep. 
Um, is Macedonian government doing enough to spread the investments um, equally around the country? That's a very good uh, point. Uh, we are uh, working hard to create good conditions for uh, investors in all regions. Uh, that's why we are uh, building at the moment 14 free economic zones, uh, most of which are located in underdeveloped regions and regions where there is higher level of unemployment. And we are trying to uh, work with uh, every single investor to convince him in some way that he invests in a part of the country where, which is uh, uh, which is uh, not in the capital, I mean in, in other free economic zones. But ultimately it's again uh, a decision by investors. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them who want cheaper labor force and on, or want less competition on the labor force, they are looking at other regions. And we've been successful in this. For example, German uh, company Drexelmeyer, which, are, which is a producer of com car components for Mercedes and some other uh, cars, uh, has located their business in the region of Kavadarci, which is central Macedonia, and they will hire 4,000 people. There is another one, uh, Kronbert and Schubert, German company, uh, located in Bitola, which is uh, 180 kilometers outside Skopje. And again, they are going to hire more than a uh, uh, couple of thousand people. Uh, we've seen Johnson Controls, which has a factory uh, in the free economic zone in Skopje, operating the second factory in Stip, in the free economic zone, which is located in the eastern part of Macedonia. So there, the investors are making their choice on the basis of uh, all the factors. And uh, if, there, if, if the logistic costs are lower and if there is a good infrastructure, it won't be a problem to attract investors in mm -hmm. other parts of the country. If you look at the history of Macedonia, um, the country has been much more developed than many of its neighbors uh, throughout the 70s, 80s. Then, uh, the dissolution of, of Yugoslavia, Macedonia did not have war. Why the country still lags behind in terms of the economic development? Uh, why do you think that's the case? Uh, we are independent state since 1991. Uh, in, in former Yugoslavia, Macedonia was the southern republic and it was much less developed than uh, north, northern parts of Yugoslavia. So with the disintegration of the market of former Yugoslavia, we were left uh, behind uh, because the companies lost their markets and uh, the companies which were producing higher value added uh, uh, products and more competitive products were located in other republics. Mm -hmm. So we started basically from scratch building our own uh, private sector and uh, trying to increase the competitiveness of the economy. And uh, there were some, uh, uh, some uh, events in the past like uh, embargoes, uh, wars in the region that were affecting this process. But in the last couple of years, we are on a good track uh, because we have significantly changed the overall business environment. Then we started working on the awareness of investors about Macedonia. So we, we first did our homework, mm -hmm. then we started discussing with investors that they should take a look at Macedonia as a new business destination if they want to reduce their costs. So I think we are on a good track. We just need some more time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talk a lot about plants and a lot of uh, about automotive uh, operations, which essentially are manufacturing operations. What other sectors uh, could be potentially interesting for investors while working in Macedonia? Oh. Well, uh, agro-processing is certainly one of the sectors where we have comparative advantages. There is a very good uh, quality of uh, agricultural products. However, we need uh, there, there are some gaps in the area of... Uh, packaging, marketing, uh, standardization of, of the quality and uh, finding markets. Uh, so this is an area where we think there could be some investors. Uh, at, at also the services, uh, I mean uh, the financial sector, banking sector and others are also attractive for investors. Uh, the overall offer uh, with the taxes uh, which are as low as 10% and in addition we have uh, a tax exemption if the company is reinvesting their profit or retaining it for future investments. 
provides a good uh, environment for all companies in all sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, are, we, we see manufacturers, we see companies in the pharmaceutical industry, we see companies in, the, in particular in the car uh, components production. Uh, and we see some in the medical equipment. This is mainly these are mainly the areas uh, uh, in which uh, we we've seen a, a lot of interest so far. Which countries Macedonia target as potential destinations of in, of, uh, of sources of, of FDI of in, for investments? Well, uh, European Union countries are norm normally a target uh, because of our location and because of the overall links uh, with Europe. Uh, however, we are also targeting uh, 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 emerging economies which are uh, growing faster and where we see a lot of potential. So we have attracted some, some companies from India um, and uh, we are trying to get some from China and other markets. Of course, United States is one of the big uh, markets which is of our interest too. Is this part of your visit here, trying to uh, speak to investors and, and, and uh, make them look at Macedonia? Uh, well, not this particular visit, but we've last week, uh, the two weeks actually ago, I was uh, together with the Prime Minister and the economic team visiting Chicago, Boston and some other areas where we had road shows. Uh, uh, in order to attract uh, attract okay. some new investors in, in, in some of the areas which I mentioned. So we are having and we will have in future a uh, couple of more road shows in United States, uh, in various parts of, of, of United States in order to present Macedonia mm -hmm. as a good business destination. Macedonia has a very big and strong diaspora, uh, immigrants living outside of Macedonia. Um, are you targeting them as potential investors as well, or, or people who can help with, with attracting investments? Absolutely. Uh, Macedonians who live abroad uh, have uh, held various positions in their companies which are uh, influential and they, they are uh, seeing more and more uh, appetite for investing in Macedonia themselves or uh, using their network. Uh, uh, we've seen recently uh, uh, an, an initiative by the group called Macedonia 2025, led by Mike Zafirovsky, the former chairman of Motorola, and uh, others who are uh, helping Macedonia to uh, uh, attract other companies uh, and to create also an investment fund for small and medium enterprises. So we see it, we are building this network and uh, uh, we are uh, trying to include more and more Macedonians who live abroad in, in, in presenting the country or investing themselves. And my final question, um, since this day, this visit to the US uh, has not been um, Focusing on, on speaking to investors, it has been, as I understand, focusing on this summit. Uh, what do you expect to achieve here while being at DC? Uh, what are you doing during your many, many meetings? Uh, well, uh, World Bank and, uh, in particular, World Bank and IFC, uh, but also the IMF are good partners of Macedonia. Uh, we are working with the World Bank for many years uh, in, uh, in the area of improving the competitiveness of the country, and that's one of the major uh, uh, factors of uh, growth and of uh, for in, uh, creating good business uh, climate. So I was uh, discussing with the bank uh, the needs uh, that we have in the area of transport and energy infrastructure, building roads and building some new energy capacities, and also projects uh, projects which will uh, improve the skills of the labor force and uh, also uh, innovation funds where the bank uh, should help Macedonia both with funding and with know-how. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time.